What's up everyone, I'm Nick Raboy, and in this tutorial, we're gonna see how to add a YouTube subscriber count widget to your live streams. So we're gonna be making use of stream elements to get our total YouTube subscribers and display them on the screen using a fancy widget using HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. One of the nice things about this particular tutorial, stream elements and the widget, is that if you get a new subscriber while you're streaming, it will increase live on the stream. So to be successful with this tutorial, you will need to have a stream elements account, which is free. You will need a basic understanding of JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, and that's about it. This tutorial will take probably no longer than five or 10 minutes, and you can replicate it to Twitch as well. So let's go ahead and go into stream elements. So I'm logged in with my YouTube account. What we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate to the My Overlays section, and we are gonna say Create New Overlay. We're gonna say that this is a 1080p overlay, but you should use whatever you're gonna be streaming at resolution wise, whether that be 720, 1080, 4K, et cetera. So let's go ahead and say start. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say example. And I'm gonna to choose to add a widget. For this particular widget, what we wanna do is we wanna say custom, and we wanna scroll down to custom widget. So that way we have full customization of this particular widget that we'll be adding to our canvas. Now, when you do that, you'll see that you've added a very small widget to your overall possibly large canvas working space. We're gonna be changing this as we progress, but for now, what we wanna do is we want to say open editor. This is where we're going to be spending most of our time. Now, we'll be working with the HTML, CSS, JavaScript fields and data, although we'll be spending most of our time probably in the JavaScript tab. However, let's go ahead and start with the fields tab. The fields represent whatever fields we're gonna see on the left-hand side of the screen, which makes it easy for the user or yourself to change different properties about this particular widget without having to go into the source code. So maybe you want to change the font size or the color or the icon. You can set yourself up with certain fields that you can then use in the JavaScript and HTML. Let's go ahead and select everything and we're gonna start from scratch. Let's go ahead and add our JSON object. And for our first field, let's go ahead and say font size. Now for this particular font size field, it's gonna be of type text because we're gonna be using Tailwind CSS and we're gonna be leveraging each of their built-in text sizes. So let's say type text. Let's go ahead and say label. So this is going to be what the user sees on the left-hand side. So the title for this particular field, we're gonna say font size. And finally, we wanna assign a value. So this value is what actually makes sense. So not only is the value gonna be what we're gonna be using, but also the property name, which we're calling font size with a lowercase f. So this is gonna be value. And for the value, the default is going to be text to Excel. So this is our first form element. So our first form field. We're gonna add one more. This next one is going to be the image. So the image is going to represent the little icon that appears in our widget. So you'll remember that in the previous window, in my particular live streams, I have both a Twitch element as well as a YouTube element. So for that example, I have two different images. So let's go ahead and call it image, but you can name it whatever you want, just like you can name font size whatever you want. So for image, let's go ahead and give it a type. Since this is gonna be an image field, we're gonna say image input. And then for the label, we're going to say YouTube glyph. And we're gonna close off this object. So all of this information for each of these fields can be found in the stream elements documentation. Let's go ahead and say done and see where we stand. So you'll notice now that we have a font size and we have a YouTube glyph. We're not gonna to touch them yet, but we will as we progress. Let's go ahead and open up the editor once more. So we no longer need to fiddle with the fields tab. The next tab that we want to deal with is going to be the HTML tab. So this HTML tab is going to function just like any other website. The difference here is that this is gonna be strictly for a particular widget. So we don't need to add all of the boilerplate head information or body and things like that we need to focus strictly on the div container for this particular widget. For my particular widgets, I'm using Tailwind CSS, which is a CSS framework. You can use whatever you want. You can use Bootstrap, you can 
design your own CSS framework. It's totally up to you. But if you plan to use Tailwind like me, you need to insert the actual Tailwind minified CSS file. You can't use Webpack and other builders for this particular stream elements widget. So let's go and paste it in. We're also gonna make use of the Montserrat font that has already been included for this particular widget. You can use whatever font you want. It's totally up to you. Now that we've added our Tailwind CSS framework, let's go ahead and start modifying the main container div. Let's add some div code. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to define our flex item. So this is gonna be our, our container for the particular widget. It's gonna be flex, so that way everything's centered and aligned appropriately. So let's go ahead and say div class equals, and we're gonna say flex. We're gonna say that the items are centered. We're gonna say that the background is going to be white. We're gonna say that the corners of this particular widget are gonna be rounded. We're gonna say that it has a small shadow. And we're gonna say that it is aligned in the margin horizontal, so the X as auto. And this will allow some centering for us. All right, inside of this container, let's go ahead and first add our image. So we're gonna say image source equals, and this is where we make use of our field value. Remember, we gave our field name the name of image, just like with the font, we called it font size. So this is where we actually use that variable. So using double curly brackets, we can say image. If you had named it something else, you would, you would use that name instead. Let's go ahead and assign it a class. And we're gonna say width equals 12. We're gonna say that height equals 12, so that way it's symmetrical. And we're gonna say rounded, uh, we can say Excel. Next up, let's go ahead and add our YouTube subscriber count information. So where are we gonna display that information? We wanna display it next to our image. We're gonna say div class equals, we're gonna say flex, we're gonna use MX auto again. And then within this container, let's go ahead and say div ID equals YouTube subscriber count. So pay attention to this ID, you can call it whatever you want, but it will be important that you remember what it is in the next step. But we're gonna use YouTube subscriber count. We're gonna give it some class information for Tailwind. For this particular class, we're gonna say that we want to add the font size. So this is the font size from our fields tab. So we're gonna make use of that variable. So whatever the user decides to enter, we're gonna say that the font is gonna be bold. We're gonna say that it's gonna be text black, so the black color. We're gonna say that the text is going to be center aligned and we're gonna justify self center. So we have all of the HTML markup complete. The next thing we can do is we can navigate over to the CSS tab. And there's gonna be a lot of CSS that we don't care about right now. So we're gonna delete it. Let's go ahead and add our own CSS. So we're gonna say star followed by curly brackets and we're gonna say font family, and this is where we make use of the Montserrat font. We're gonna have a secondary font of sans serif in case it doesn't exist. We're gonna assign it a default color. So in this case, the default color is going to be black. We're gonna say that the overflow is gonna be hidden, and we're gonna say that the margin is gonna be zero. Using this simple CSS, we're setting us up for success when it comes to actually displaying the count information as well as our image. So our CSS is done. So we're making use of this particular custom CSS style sheet as well as Tailwind for this example. Now we can dive into the JavaScript. So we're almost done. Let's go ahead and clear out the JavaScript that it currently has. Because when it comes to stream elements, there's a lot of different things that you can do for your stream, but we only care about the YouTube subscriber count for this particular widget. So what we wanna do is we wanna say let YouTube subscriber count equal zero. We're gonna add two different event listeners. So the first is the on widget load for when the widget first loads on the stream, and the second for when new events come in. 
So every time you get a new subscriber on your stream, that particular event is going to be triggered. So let's go ahead and start with the on widget load. So we're going to say window dot add event listener. We're going to say on widget load. We're going to say function. This is going to be the object that is passed. So all of the information that's sent to the on widget load event. And inside of this listener, we can start by saying constant data equals object detail dot session dot data. And all of this information can be found in the documentation for stream elements, but we're getting the data that, that's being sent. And then we need to extract particularly the subscriber count from that data. So we're going to say YouTube subscriber count equals data. And then we're going to say subscriber total followed by count. And you might be wondering, well, why are we using YouTube subscriber count here? And we've set it to zero at the initial. Well, just in case the on widget load doesn't fire in time, we don't want any kind of null or undefined values on our stream. So we're defaulting it to zero, at which point when the actual widget loads, then we set it to whatever our YouTube subscriber count is. Now that we have that information, we need to display it in our HTML. And we can do that by using the ID field that we had added to our particular HTML div tag. And remember, we called it YouTube subscriber count. So with that information, we can say document dot get element by ID. We can say YouTube subscriber count. And we can say inner HTML equals YouTube subscriber count. So we're setting the contents of that particular div tag to be the YouTube subscriber count, which is going to be a numeric value. So that's what happens on the widget load. And if we say done, we can see this in action. So you'll notice up on my screen on the canvas, it says 70 subscribers, which matches my, my total subscriber count for this particular live streaming channel. You'll also notice that the image is empty. So let's go ahead and set that image. Let's go ahead and click on the set image for the fields. You can either upload an image or use one that you already have in your library. I'm going to select one that I already have. And now that image has been added to this particular widget because we had set it up that way with Tailwind. So let's finalize things because if I click emulate and I say subscriber event, nothing's going to happen. So let's go back into the editor. So we're going to say open editor. We're going to go to the JS and we're going to add that to the listener. And that listener is going to be on event received. So the on event received is going to behave similar to the on widget load. There are some slight differences, but for the most part, you'll get the idea. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to see if the event was not null, because in certain circumstances, that event might be null, at which case some errors will be thrown and it'll totally mess us up. So what we can say is if not equal, so object.detail.event. So if this is null or undefined, we're just going to return. If the event does exist, we want to figure out what type of event was triggered. Because when it comes to stream elements, there are at least more than 10 different events that could be fired. I mean, what if you got a donation or a tip or etc.? We only care about the subscriber event. So what we can say is we can say constant listener equals object dot detail dot listener dot split. So we're splitting. So we're what we're doing is we're splitting based on a hyphen field. So we're going to say split. And then we only want the left hand side of that split because you're going to end up with a value on the left of the hyphen and values on the right side of the hyphen. We only care about the value on the left. So we're going to say index item zero. Next up, let's get the actual event data. So we're going to say constant event equals object dot detail dot event. And we're going to look at the listener and make sure that it's actually subscriber. So we're going to say if listener equals subscriber. And if it is, let's go ahead and do something with the information. And that's something that we're going to do with the information is just set the inner HTML of that particular div tag. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it. It's not going to be YouTube subscriber count this time. It's going to be event dot count because the count information that has come in with that particular change event 
is going to be in the event itself. We already know what type of event it is because we listened for it. We got the subscriber and now we're getting that data that goes with that particular subscriber event. Let's go ahead and save it. All right, so it set it to nine. Nine is obviously not right, but that's because I had hit emulate a few times and it's kind of catching up with itself. So if I say emulate and I say subscriber event, it's changing it because even though that it's not just increasing my 70 to 71 or 72, it's just throwing random values out there. But if we're live on stream and we get some subscribers, it will reflect realistically. So we're just emulating these subscription events. They're false information. But the important thing is that this number is changing because that's the number we want to change when we're on stream. So when we load the page, we're going to see our initial subscriber count because of the on widget load event. And then when we get a subscription, we're going to get an updated number because of the on event received listener. So just to recap for this particular tutorial, we made use of stream elements. We created a new overlay. This is a custom overlay. And what we did was we opened up the editor because we wanted to edit the HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and fields. We didn't touch the data. We could have, we can, we can wipe all of this out. It's more relative to what the actual field data is. So the defaults, uh, but we can just ignore it for this example. So first of all, what we did was we edited the fields. We added our two possible fields. We could add more than that. We could add um, less than that. It's totally up to you. Uh, we added one for the text, which is a Tailwind font size. You can get information about that font size in the Tailwind documentation. We added an image field item. So that way we can add this YouTube glyph. We made use of both of these. So the variable names would be font size and image. We made use of them in the HTML tab. So in the HTML tab, we actually imported Tailwind. We used we were using a font that had already existed in this particular widget. We used Tailwind to model our HTML markup. We added our variable. So we added the image variable to the image source. And we also added font size as part of our class. Now on the HTML tab, remember I said that the YouTube subscriber count was important because it was, because if we jump to the JavaScript, we made use of the YouTube subscriber count. That's how we set it. We use the inner HTML. Uh, inside of the CSS, we added some basic boilerplate CSS that Tailwind didn't really make use of for our example. But to sum it up, we did all of this with less than 50 lines of code and markup. So it wasn't that bad. Um, so what you would do is you would, you would get the link to this particular overlay. You would add it to OBS uh, and you'd be good to go. And you could replicate a lot of these steps for the Twitch widget if you wanted to. It's slightly different. You'd have to refer to the documentation for the various variables, but it's really not that difficult to do. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to hit that like button and then subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, I really do hope that you enjoyed this content. If you did, go ahead and share it. Uh, until next time, I hope that everyone has a great rest of the day.